So what I'm doing is I'm mixing together a very thin layer of red and yellow, adding just a lot of water to that mix and carrying that down, making sure I've got enough in that reservoir to cover the entire face. I've added a line of grey on top there, just to indicate the hairline and letting that blend in. And I'm colouring the entire face, this colour, just making sure I'm cutting around the eyes as well. And it may look a little bit funny at this stage, but actually when it dries, um, you'll see what it looks like. And it's really important to make sure you've got the right tone. One of the things I do is I practice in a sketchbook before, even just the colours, just to make sure they look like what they should when they're dried. So going over the entire face now and you can see some of it starting to dry near the top and I'm adding in some darker tones now to the face. Now these are just some shadows that are there because of the light source to the right of the picture. So looking at your reference picture you're going to have to decide where your light source is coming from or if you just want to paint based on that reference picture that's fine as well. So just using this large mop brush that I've used uh, for the initial wash to continue working my way through those areas which are a little bit darker and this is a very light grey mix that I'm using. All this is done wet in wet and I prefer to add in most of the tones wet on wet so depending on your style and how you want to do it, but I, I find that it does look a lot smoother once it's dried. So I'm now adding in some extra details, doing this shadow underneath the lip and on the chin. Around the ear as well making sure that I'm not completely obliterating the lighter areas of the ear. I want that to part of it to stay lighter just to show that it's catching a bit of light. Mixing up a darker grey now to do the hat. So going around and painting it pretty much the same color all the way through. And you'll find it's very hard to actually get a flat wash on smooth watercolor paper. It can be frustrating, but for our portraits, you can get a lot more detail when you're using smooth paper. It's just a preference. I also use cold press paper for portraits. So you can see already near the top of the hat, it's starting to get little bit furry there so I'm going to go over that and also some areas near the right side of the face. While it's all still damp wait for that to dry. Now that's all dried I'm going to go through and add in some extra details. So underneath the eyes I'm putting in some lines there, some shadows according to the reference picture, just some of the darker areas around the actual eye too. And I'm using now a number eight round brush and some light, a light wash of gray to go over this area. Putting in the eyebrow as well, just indicating it. And everything does dry lighter, so it does look a bit dark at the moment, but you can see later how it turns out. Again, now I'm going to 
follow that light source to the right create a bit of darkness on the left side of the nose and underneath the nose as well and adding in some lines extra lines to the face almost from this point on you're just focusing on some of those smaller details to make it look more lifelike and more like the person that you're trying to paint now I'm doing some extra lines on the left side of the face and it's all pretty light it's still that uh, lightish grain mix that I've used and even the yellow and uh, reds run into it but it's not a big deal it's kind of warmish gray doing the left eye now bit of detail in that eye underneath the eye too now around the eye and constantly throughout this painting I'm looking at that reference photo and just making sure that the dark areas are dark and the light areas are light and you can even emphasize that more than the actual photograph if you like it just depends on what kind of portrait you want to end up with so I've got some dark areas around the nose just around the eyebrows now so there's a just want to I've realized this area of the face isn't dark enough based on the photo and I'm going over it again with another wash and when you're using very thin layers of paint you can get away with going over areas again but if you're using darker bits of paint it's a lot harder because then it starts losing that watercolor look adding some shadows underneath the chin again I'm just darkening where I need to And letting that area of the face just blend in with the neck a little bit as well I'm going in and just adding the lips bit of detail here around the nose region too a lot of what I'm doing now at, at this stage is just refining so if you've got a if you've got a good drawing and your first wash has turned out the way that you wanted it to turn out from here on it's very easy to continue building up that detail a lot of the time you start off a watercolor and it doesn't really look like much and you know, I've talked about this before but it's a lot of the times you it's just about persevering through and thinking to yourself hey this doesn't look like much now but it probably will once I'm done so you can count all the times I've started a painting and then didn't want to finish it but pushed through and it actually turned out all right so that's one of the things with watercolor it's a cumulative process There's a bird outside my window now, it's making noise. Um, so just adding in a little bit more detail around the eyes. Emphasizing some more shadows. So you, I'm doing this because as I notice the paper drying, um, I'm realizing it's the, the tone that I applied before wasn't dark enough, so I need to go over and redo that area again. 
or sometimes I just want to emphasize the dark areas a bit more than the photograph too. Either way, if you if your first washes are pretty light, it's possible to do this a number of times, but I wouldn't get too bogged down. So here again I'm just darkening some other areas. And adding in some lines around the forehead, this is wet on dry at this stage and, and don't want to make them too obvious. Some of the lines I've, I haven't connected as well um, and it's a very light, very light grey that I'm using. Just add in some of those lines and textures to the face. Continuing, just continuing to add more details, emphasizing some of those lines around the lips. If you're still watching and you, you're enjoying this video, it's helping you. One of the things you can do to help me out is to subscribe to the channel and also leave a comment. I've only just started making these videos a couple of weeks ago and um, I've had some some nice comments and uh, some questions as well so I'm very happy to answer them and I'm having a lot of fun making these videos as well so I would also like you know some feedback on what you guys want to see now I'm going through you know this is just some finishing really some finishing touches around the eyes the darkest spots that side of the face uh, just under the nose nostrils and around the eyes and also the area joining the lips I'm just making that area along the ear a little bit darker now but you know, remembering I don't want to completely obliterate the lighter areas You'd be surprised how something as subtle as this, just leaving a little bit of the ear unpainted, indicates just the light catching onto it. It's really hard to leave things sometimes. You always want to, especially with, with watercolour, it's so easy to just get carried away and paint over something that you shouldn't. Still make that mistake a lot of the time. Now I'm going in with a darker darker uh, gray slash black you can create your darker tones from mixing all three primaries together or you can use a blue and a a brown mixed together So now I'm finishing off the last bits of the portrait, now just going around the hat. The paint mix I'm using here is probably the thickest mix of grey, so kind of a dark grey um, slash purple mix. And at times I'm actually just dropping in bits and pieces. Unfortunately I've had to salvage this footage and edit it down a fair bit. It was way too overexposed before. And don't be afraid to drop in some more obvious colours in there. If you have a purple, if you have a purple, or you've got a bit of blue, chuck that in there. And 
and that's the final result. Thanks for watching.